So as an environmental biologist, what's your take on ultra-high temperature pasteurization of milk? Would you drink that? No, I wouldn't. I mean, there's nothing there, really, right? Um, let's just think about it. I mean, honestly, on a logical level, aside from any science, we have, we have a, a milk product that's boiled. It's homogenized, meaning that all of the fats are, are made. And that's because people don't um, like, oh, well, my milk's separating. There's a water product and there's a cream product on top. I'm confused on why that's happening. I don't want to shake it up. So we're going we're gonna to mix it all together. Well, mixing it all like that... Um, actually changes that lipid structure. We're changing that fat structure and it's not as bioavailable. When we heat it, it's it's totally killing that molecule. So we have, um, like I said, the relationships between proteins and enzymes. So enzymes pre-digest those proteins. So many people you hear say lactose intolerant, things like that. But if you, you have the lactase in milk that breaks down the lactose, lactase enzymes in general, super, super sensitive. Um, proteins in general, pretty resilient, you know, pretty strong guys. So when we heat the milk, it's killing those enzymes and it's letting those proteins survive. Okay, so you're getting that protein, but you have no way to break it down and it's not bioavailable to your body. Is that why so many people are what, what they call lactose intolerant? Exactly, exactly. That's where we get the terminology for lactose intolerant. like, oh, I'm lactose intolerant, I can't have that milk. Well, actually, you could probably have raw, raw dairy and be just fine because it has plenty of lactase to break down that lactose. Um, we also see a hybridization in commercial cows. Um, there's a casein protein in, in a lot of, in, in all cow milk, I'm sorry. Um, but the casein protein is a beta A1 casein, casein protein. And our breast milk and human milk, um, uh, goat milk and sheep milk is a beta 2 casein protein. The beta-1, we have no receptor for. We can't pick up, we cannot break down. Our body views it as poison. So unless you're getting an old world, non-hybridized cow milk, which you can't get commercially, then your body is viewing that as poison. It's actually detrimental. It's just causing inflammation. And we know with inflammation, that is the basis of a lot of disorders these days. Um, so no, I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to put that in my body. I would not do that. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want raw milk that's from the, straight from the cow. Or they, they should know. They probably don't know that it's this enzymatic, nutrient-rich superfood. Um, a lot of I see a lot of moms coming in and just getting that for their kids. You know, once they've stopped breastfeeding or um, their milk is dried up, they they put their kids on goat's milk or on a cow's milk, but they don't want to feed them the pasteurized because it's pumped up with hormones, you know, so that now their child's getting all these synthetic hormones at a young age. It's fortified with vitamins that are non, the synthetic and non-bioavailable, and the basis, the carrier, the, the media is the milk that's been pasteurized, homogenized, and standardized to a point that it's not even recognizable by your body. So that's a really interesting concept to take into your mind and, and think about and be your own scientist, like I said, and make that decision as an educated individual.